I'd like to deeply thank Professor Whiteley and the friends and colleagues from the College of Phlebology for the invitation to present our research group, the latest data on the aquatic environment used for our venous lymphatic patients. These are my conflicts of interest. While I declare that indeed is interesting for us uh, talking about evidence-based data in the aquatic environment so that we can uh, move from the religious or empirical aspects in its use to a real science. And this is particularly needed if we look at uh, the numbers of the Global Spine Wellness Summit report uh, in terms of investment for the SPA ward uh, with uh, not that much investment in terms of uh, research for really understanding uh, the potential benefits for the venous lymphatic drainage. We have indeed a significant amount of literature produced for the rheumatological patients, but not that much for venous disease patients with a limited uh, data presentation in uh, uh, PubMed, for example. Now, we definitely need uh, to bring standardization and reproducibility and science for our patients so that they are not simply enjoying a bath like these three reproductors, but they are enjoying science and uh, maximization of the benefit. Now, if we look uh, back in time, we see that in the 90s already, Ernst was able to demonstrate a significant improvement in terms of lower limb volume control and also hemodynamics following hydrotherapy. But as I was saying, we need standardization and reproducibility to produce good science, and uh, protocols like this one are surely not so reproducible. Another interesting publication uh, came uh, later on by the group of Carpentier in a crossover design study showing us uh, better pain control in the aquatic environment rather than outside the pool. But at the same time, showing uh, that the type of balneotherapy was chosen by the spa physician for each and every patient, which makes this data surely not reproducible as these ones that came five years later. And as for this publication of the same period, uh, focusing on the quality of life, but again, with a not standardized and reproducible um, series of uh, physical activities. Now, these activities done in the aquatic environment can benefit of a physical advantage that is coming indeed from the physics law of Stevin that is uh, telling us uh, that it really depends on the density and on uh, the eight of uh, the hydrostatic column with every single centimeter performing around 0.7 millimeter mercury, which means that when we are standing up in a pool at 120 centimeter depth, we have around 0.7 millimeter of mercury per 120, which means around 80 millimeter mercury. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, these 80 millimeter mercury are not uh, perceived differently from the 20 millimeter mercury of uh, the Gertrude stockings, for example. And it's not magical, it's simply because uh, we don't have uh, the Laplace law applied in the same way in uh, the aquatic environment, so that we don't really perceive this high pressure. Now, in 2017, we published the first uh, data of a standardized uh, reproducible uh, protocol of exercises in the aquatic environment, focusing uh, on uh, phlebolymphedema, lower limbs, and uh, showing how after uh, two sessions per week, per week, 50 minutes each, after five sessions, we had a significant decrease in lower limb volume, around 300 mils, a significant decrease in the subcutaneous thickness, and a significant improvement in the ankle range of motion. We included backward walking as per the paper of Dixie showing that indeed backward walking is increasing uh, the mobilization of uh, the ankle. And that indeed we had um, a correlation between uh, the improvement in the ankle range of motion and the improvement in lower limb volume control. Now, if we look at the clinical aspects, there was a significant uh, decrease in the heaviness feeling, while there was no significant variation after five sessions in the functional ambulation classification score, that is a score dedicated to the ability in walking. But we were not able with this study to really answer to the question related to who uh, was uh, the real one bringing the benefit. Was it like the exercise protocol? Was it the aquatic environment? So we designed a rigorous uh, randomized comparative trial that is called the DATA, dry land and thermal aquatic randomized control trial of standardized exercise uh, protocol for chronic venous uh, disease. Basically, we use the same protocol, we looked at the same uh, objective outcome measures, and we published this time on JVS, venous lymphatic disorders. 
uh, we perform the exercises uh, in uh, the Thurman Center of Abano near Padova, where I hope uh, we will be in person uh, as soon as uh, possible, together with you, of course. And we perform uh, the exercises in our university center of uh, Ferrara. The protocol, as I was saying, is including the mobilization of all the joints of the lower limb with a specific series of uh, repetitions and a series, so to make it uh, totally reproducible. Now, after the five sessions, uh, we reported a significant decrease in the lower limb volume just in the aquatic group, not in the trilent group, significant uh, decrease in the subcutaneous uh, uh, thickness uh, at the A, B, and C assessment uh, points just in uh, the aquatic group. Same uh, for the reduction in uh, the great saphenous uh, vein caliber at point A. In terms of ankle range of motions, both groups demonstrated uh, a significant improvement, uh, but better in uh, the aquatic uh, group. That was, of course, uh, correlated with the lower limb variation in terms of volume. In terms of quality of life, a civic significantly improved in both groups, while interestingly, the BMCQ improved just in the aquatic group. A further publication of our research group on this topic dealt with the bioimpedance analysis, showing indeed a significant decrease in the extracellular fluids just in the aquatic environment group, showing a direct correlation with the lower limb improvement in terms of volume, as it was for the ankle range of motion. But uh, we found actually nothing new with these publications of our research uh, group, meaning uh, that uh, quoting uh, the great van der Strick, who was used to say that we should know the history so that uh, we will uh, know to waste our time uh, forcing doors that were already opened by Adam. In reality, it was Connor's jobs pointing out the great potentials of uh, the aquatic environment. He was affected by an ounce, and he noticed that when he was diving into his pool, the ounce was uh, getting better, understanding that this was related with the uh, aquatic uh, hydrostatic pressure gradient, so reproducing this pressure gradient in the stockings we now know. I deeply thank uh, Erika Menegatti, uh, who is in the first line for these uh, research activities of our research uh, group, and uh, together with Erika, we look forward for presenting soon the data related to the other properties of the aquatic environment that can be of benefit to thermal and chemical. You can find part of uh, these investigations in uh, the document we published in uh, 2019 following the V winter 2019 uh, meeting uh, that involved also Professor Whiteley and the College of Phrenology group in the analysis of similarities and controversies in uh, guidelines around the world, for which I deeply thank once again Professor Whiteley and the College of Phrenology. They look forward for co-working with the same team in uh, uh, the next uh, scientific and educational adventure related to fake news, uh, free venous and lymphatic communication. Indeed, uh, we have a report of more than 40% of medical websites reporting fake news, for which uh, I invite all of you to report eventually encounter the venous and lymphatic fake news in the dedicated website. So to contribute to the creation of a consensus document that indeed will be presented uh, during the once in a lifetime opportunity of the Universal Expo, in Dubai next February during the health week indeed of the Universal Expo. But uh, let's hope that uh, before that we will be together in London and meeting once again at the splendid group of Professor Whiteley and the College of Phlebology, who I deeply thank once again for the invitation.